Good afternoon and welcome to another segment of Off the Cuff with Deb. Today joining me again is Kathy Sabater with Fairway Mortgage. Hey, Woo! Nice to meet you again. I'm excited to have you, Kathy. One, because the last couple of segments I did with Kathy, we got such an enormous response. And the feedback we got was great information, very helpful, appreciated it, and they were looking forward to another segment of more information that will help them in their home buying experience. I've worked with Kathy and she is now currently our in-house mortgage specialist. And for the reasons that she knows her her business and I appreciate that and today we're going to talk about a couple of items uh, first of all Fed rates increasing I know there's this big stir about the Fed rates and you know what's going on with the Fed rates and how does it affect us and if they increase what do we need to know about that or not so what you need to know or is that tomorrow we'll we'll find out what the chairman is going to tell us so basically this is how it works Fed rates really affect mm short-term loans, which means credit cards, adjustable rate mortgages, right? But as we talked about before, the market global also reacts differently. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, what does that mean? So if the Fed rates do increase it, mortgage rates may go down. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the fear is, oh, Fed rates are going to go up. And then the market acts the opposite way of what it should mm -hmm. and makes this, a, rather, it's a more cost for the client. Mm -hmm. So, for example, right now, if you're doing FHA, which is a non-profit organization. That's right. Your which means the mortgage company doesn't make a profit. Therefore, the interest rates can be less lower. and lower. Correct. Right. Unlike conventional, which is for profit. Correct. Okay. So your, your interest rate might be as low as 3.75 based on your credit scores, your debt right. ratio, and some other things, right? So people are in fear of the Fed rates going up. Mm -hmm. Well, the market reacting to that then makes people say, hey, maybe I'm going to invest in the stock market versus the mortgage-backed oh, securities. Yeah. Okay. And hence, that is really what fluctuates the interest rates. Okay. Right? Yeah. So the Fed rate is just going to do the short term. Mm -hmm. Right? So at the end of the day, correct me if right. I'm wrong. So what that really means for those of you who are in the market to buy mm -hmm. or who are looking to refinance or to get out of those interest-only loans that most of which are going to be coming due here very soon. If you right. have an interest-only loan, read your promissory note because a lot of those interest-only loans are going to adjust here in the 10-year mark. And the question is, is what do they adjust to? Is that going to be a higher fixed-rate mortgage, which obviously is going to increase their monthly payment, mm -hmm. which might make a huge difference on whether or not they keep that loan or refinance out of it or sell it so that they can get into a new mortgage. So, so there are a lot of options with that, and please hit up Kathy for more information on that because she can help you to discern what maybe would be the right decision for you in that scenario, Correct. right? So with regards to the Fed rates, we've got the Fed rates, lower interest rates, qualifications are easier with the Feds, right? And the fear is, is if the Fed rates go up, I'm not gonna qualify for as much property, right? right? And that's a fear but not really F. an actuality of what's happening. Right, so we take the fear factor and we make it fact. So again, right. we gotta understand the process and how the mortgage industry works as it pertains to the Fed rates. Correct. And again, you said earlier, so for those of you who are curious, it is gonna affect the interest rates on credit cards and other things before it's gonna affect the mortgage rate. Right, right? so if you have an adjustable rate mortgage, which is considered a short term, then right. it may affect that particular rate. So yeah. when the Fed rates do decide to increase it, mm -hmm. look at your credit card bill, so if you were at 5%, that might increase. If you were 12%, that might increase. Oh, if you okay. have an adjustable rate mortgage, that adjustable rate mortgage is fixed for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. Look at your promissory note, six months, 12 months is when usually the adjustments make. Yeah. That is when you concern yourself with, plus yeah. whatever index it's tied to. Yeah, and, and I don't know, a lot of the terminology right. that is used in the lending industry can be a little bit scary. Promissory note, what is that? Where do I find it? It's in your loan documents. It yes. was actually something that was signed when you actually did your loan and Correct. you signed your loan document. So you're gonna see in there, it's probably about eight to 10 pages. It's an important document to look at because it does have the terms of your note, when it's going to adjust, if it's actually going to adjust, right? right? But interest rate, interest only loans mm -hmm. are good for certain people. Correct. They were always intended, if I understand correctly, of course being in real estate, is for those investors or homeowners that planned on maybe keeping their property for a seven to 10 year basis, especially the higher 
in properties like the one we have on Long Branch. At Correct. 5034 Long Branch, we have a listing in Ocean Beach that's listed for 1.2 to 1.3 million. So most of the interest is paid in the beginning of the loan. Correct. So with an interest only loan for such a high mortgage, in the case of this property, for example, you could end up saving anywhere from 500 to $1,500 a month, depending right. on the down payment and interest, you know, or uh, your credit scores and income and that sort of thing. But it's a substantial difference to pay interest only versus principal and interest every month. And if you know you're going to only keep the property for seven to 10 years, it's better to do an interest only. That's right. Yeah. So as Debbie has mentioned, so we talked a little bit about the Fed rate and how it affects the short term. So with an interest only loan, usually it's three, five or seven to 10 years that it's fixed, interesting enough, for that time frame. Mm. So when you look at some of your mortgage statements mm -hmm. and you see the principal amount that's due, so let's just do easy math. Okay. You owe $600,000 on your house, mm -hmm. you make your payment, next month you still owe $599,000. Right. Right? Because a dollar of it went towards the principal. Correct. So the interest only <laughs> loan, the interest only loan is only geared for those people. The loan amount has to be above the county limit, so it has to be above 613000 mm -hmm. And in this case, with the listing, what was the, the address again? Uh, 5034 Long Branch in right. Ocean Beach. So yeah. if you put 20% down, consider an interest-only loan, instead of paying over $5,000 a month mm -hmm. on a principal and interest payment where you know the principal is not really getting paid down until like the five or seventh year, mm -hmm. and you go to an interest-only loan, you could be paying like 42, 43. So a substantial amount of savings. Yeah for that particular type of program mm -hmm. for that particular house. Yeah, and it also interest only loans are really good for investors who are looking for cash flow, who buy investment property, who know that they're gonna be turning this investment property or it'll be used for a rental. So do interest only, collect your rents, and now you have a nice ROI, nice return on investment. Give me a call, send me a message if you'd like to talk a little bit more about how I can show you how to increase your cash flow by using different loan programs as you acquire property for investment purposes. Um, the the other thing I want to talk about today, Kathy, is number two is uh, the five percent conventional loans. Because again, we are familiar with the FHA, which is a three and a half percent down program. Yes. FHA has mortgage insurance. Most people don't want to pay the mortgage insurance, which is about, is there a percentage of uh, the mortgage insurance, a, a percentage that goes on to the actual mortgage right. that they figure out? Right. So when you're doing an FHA loan, if you're any loan that you're doing that you're not putting 20% down, you are going to pay mortgage insurance, period. Mm -hmm. The only loan is for our military, our veterans, and thank you and God bless you for your service to our country because we definitely appreciate yes, it. Yes, absolutely. They do not mm -hmm. pay a mortgage insurance. So Okay, so on the VA loans, no mortgage insurance. Correct. So FHA, 3.5% down program, mortgage insurance, and the 5% conventional has mortgage insurance. But the difference between the two, because I recently had a buyer say, I don't want to do an FHA loan because I don't want to have the extra cost of mortgage insurance tacked on to my principal and interest payment and taxes and insurance. So if you go with a 5% conventional program, well, FHA mortgage insurance is for the life of the loan. It's indefinite. In other words, you can't get out of paying the mortgage insurance. But with a 5% conventional, there are actually ways to get out of having to pay the mortgage insurance. Again, take a look at your promissory note. It's going to have very specific uh, guidelines for you on how you can do that. And that also depends on the equity and the time that you've owned it and that sort of thing and how much money you actually put down. So if you have a choice between choosing FHA at 3.5% down but can go conventional 5%, just for the sake of the mortgage insurance being one, for the life of the loan and two, being able to get out of it with, you know, property values increasing in the San Diego County area between seven and 8% on average every single year, I'd say you're better off to go with the conventional. And I believe that you can also have gifts like you do in FHA for the conventional program if you need help with the down payment. Absolutely. So give us some numbers, because I have a listing at 440 Paradise View here in Vista. Beautiful 2015 built, no homeowner fees, okay. five bedrooms, three baths. So let's give a, a price of 620,000 on okay. this property. Going with the difference between an FHA at 3.5% down, tell me what the payment, or the down payment would be on an FHA, 620, let me get my handy dandy calculator. Okay. So for FHA, you would need approximately 22000 for your down payment at 3.5% for this particular home. Okay. And if you did 5% conventional, you've got about, what did you say, 2200 So that at 5%, 32000 31000 
Okay, so there's a difference of maybe 11 to 12,000. Right. Okay, so a difference of 11 to 12,000. Now that's a huge difference to a lot of people. That's why it's important if you have, if you're, if you're able to bridge that gap with gifts from family or other sources, it's good to go that route, right. especially here. But if you can't go with the FHA, because the FHA is still a great program, right? right? And uh, better rate interest rates, Right, so you, you know. have a, a, a couple of different things, and, and because we're limited in time, we definitely just want to give you the, the information mm -hmm. so that you can understand the basics, and then of course, give us a call and we'll give you some more information. So Yeah, absolutely. Let me just in, a, a pound on the FHA. So if you put 3.5% down, that is the life of the loan. If you put more, 10%, then there's different rules. So look at your promissory note. Okay. Work with a lender who's going to explain that to you because once you sign your documents, we're going to explain that, hey, this is fixed for 30 years, and then these are the, the criteria that goes with it. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with the conventional loan with 5% down, mm -hmm. similar case, but then all you need is 78% of the value of the home, and then you go through the process okay. of getting the mortgage insurance removed. Okay. Right? Yeah. But for the most part, depending on what your strategy is, right? So I usually try to do a three, five, seven year plan with my clients because mm -hmm. let's face it, a lot of us are getting priced out of the market, right? Right. So if you go to buy a house right now or a condo, most of us have to start with a condo. I started with a condo, Yeah. got a condo, lived it for two years and then sold it and used the equity to purchase a home. Right. So with those kind of strategies, I would provide you the difference between putting this amount of money down, mm -hmm. the payment with the mortgage insurance for FHA, then for conventional if you put 5% mm -hmm. down, and then we work these numbers because mm -hmm. you need to be able to make that educated guess. Yeah. And a our question, or rather the decision, because yeah. also with condos, there's also some other rules. So conventional is a lot easier to qualify for, for condos. condos because FHA, you have to be the condo has to be approved. This is one of the things, and thank you for that, Cassie. Yes. I appreciate it. And, and this is one of the things I tell my clients, having been a real estate broker here locally in Vista and the San Diego area for the last 30 years, is get educated. Because the, the loan process, the buying process, the selling process can be very complicated. And a lot of times we think we know how loans work and how real estate works because we have so much access to information online. But the truth is, is that there's a lot of information online that's not only confusing, but it's actually not even factual, right? And a lot of it is, you know, geared towards trying to draw you in to get you to make a phone call rather than to educate you so that you could make an educated decision. And that's what our team does here at Stage Homes Real Estate and our cast and crew and Kathy being here as our in-house lender is we believe that the best thing we can offer you is education. So the first thing we want to do is educate you on the different loan programs that are available, find which one matches your needs, find out what price you can qualify for, and then help you walk through that process and hold your hand and make sure that you can enter into the fabulous role of home ownership, build equity for your future, and a lot of people, they don't even know what equity is when they've not owned a home. Equity is when your home increases in value. So let's say, Kathy, I bought a house for $300,000, I bought a condo. Mm -hmm. And we have an 8% increase in property values in San Diego. So I went out and I bought a condo for $300,000. I used my FHA or my VA, which is zero down, right? So now I've got a condo. How much did I put down? Oh, uh, you want the, so I'm going to just do the equity part because that's what the part okay, is the that's most right. stress, right? Okay. So this is what we talked about the last segment. Okay. In one year, if you have an 8% equity growth, that means you've earned $24,000 of equity. Right. So think about it. If you bought a car for $30,000, mm -hmm. it's not going to be worth... No, it's going to depreciate. It's going to depreciate. So that's forty-eight thousand dollars in two years, which right. is the time that we recommend that you keep a home, sell it in two years, and then transfer that equity base. So that forty-eight thousand dollars, in addition to the down payment that you made, and put that down on another property that has the ability to increase additionally in equity, right. and you just keep that going until you hopefully eventually end up in the home of your dreams, and that's the whole case. That's absolutely what happens. Right. Because I know I have to sell, my, buy my condo, sell my home. I mean, life happens and you have to sell your homes because you want something else. But let's think about this, rent versus own. That's there right. There are people spending more money mm -hmm. on rent right now. So returning homeowners, bankruptcy, short sales, foreclosures, mm -hmm. you may qualify for FHA loan, 3.5% down, depending That's right. on how, how long ago that happened. That's right. Or conventional with 5% down. Yeah, this is the time. I mean, we had our crash in like 2005, 2006, and a lot of people were hit by that crash in the market, myself included, and many other people around us. Now is the time because we're looking at, what, four years for short sale? Well, each loan has a different criteria. I don't want to okay, mention that's it right. right here. So okay. VA, FHA, and conventional, based on this, let me expound on the date. Okay. The date is when the property grant deed is sold. 
Okay. Not when you released or left the property. Okay. Okay. So you could have filed the bankruptcy in 2012, mm -hmm. but if the property didn't get sold until 2014, then that that's, is when the that's date the started. release date. Okay. Right. So yeah. So for returning homeowners, you're paying rent versus mortgage. Mm -hmm. And then let's think about those tax benefits. Not not oh, to mention, yes, absolutely. you're supposed to be a homeowner again. Yeah, that's right. And we want to help you get there again. Yeah, and we can help you get there. Now is the time. Interest rates are still historically low. Um, even though the inventory is low, that is because inventory is selling quickly because the interest rates are low. So the best thing to do is to work with a buyer who is familiar with the area, the local area, and ask them to work alongside you with the lender so that you go in as the you know best qualified buyer. Because mm -hmm. what I like about Kathy is she can actually submit the loan and get underwriting approval with conditions. So when we go in and negotiate, we actually have underwriting approval and it's the same as cash for most sellers. Right. They just wanna know that you can qualify. So we're not just gonna make a phone call and pre-qualify you. We're gonna actually put together a package and make sure that when we present your offer, that your offer is the best offer on the table and we're the best prepared to close in a timely manner. And I appreciate that about you because you do that every single time and you do it well. Yeah, so thank you. thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us here live on another segment of Off the Cuff. And we look forward to next week. We are gonna be talking about reverse mortgages. A lot of new changes in the lending industry as it pertains to reverse mortgages. Some really great things to consider. So come back next week, three o'clock live Thursday, Off the Cuff with Deb. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.